Hare Krishna. So today I will talk about the theme of scripture for dummies. <laughs> so about 20, 20, about 20, 25, 30 years ago almost, first time I read this title, okay, family title, for dummies. So it was maybe like laptops for dummies or something like that. <laughs> so first time I read it, I found it so offensive. I said, who will want to uh, identify themselves as dummies? He said, I am not a dummy. But somehow, the branding has become in such a way that there is nothing derogatory associated with the word dummies. It's just that, okay, I am not, I'm not uh, tech savvy. So, if something is very simple for me. So, words have connotations. There are, there are, in, in language, there are two things. There are denotations and connotations. Denotation is what the word literally means. It's a dictionary definition. And connotation is how the word is used contextually. So some words have positive connotations, some words have negative connotations. And good dictionary is don't just give the notation, the meaning, but also the connotations. So in today's world, if we hear, say for example, somebody is called a less intelligent, either some Vaishyas or Sushudras or women are less intelligent, we might find it very objectionable. How dare anyone call us less intelligent? So that less intelligent is not in a derogatory or a value judgmental sense. It is the same sense in which somebody might say this is okay, writing for dummies or philosophy for dummies. Now when the word is used over there, it is in the sense that this is made simpler. This is made simpler and more accessible. And the, the idea is not to, it's not so much to make a judgment about the about the level of the people as a statement about the accessibility of the knowledge. So the thrust is different. When so when I first read the word computer for dummies, it's, I'm not a dummy. So I took it as a personal statement. But the point and the way this name word is used nowadays, it's not a statement about the level of the reader. It is more about a statement about the level of the knowledge. So the knowledge is, it, so it has become a positive thing. Recently somebody asked me, that I should write a Bhagavad Gita for dummies. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems that the name dummies has, at least for dummies, has become like a copyright. So, we cannot publish a book with for dummies. We have to go to the dummies publishing house. <laughs> and then, so they have a Bible for dummies. We should have a technically speaking uh, a book with for dummies also. So, they have a particular format in which they want books to be written. We are exploring that. So, it's not a statement about the level of, it's not a derogatory statement about the level of the readers. In fact, it's, a, it's become like a positive statement, a laudatory statement about the accessibility of the knowledge. So this principle of customization of knowledge according to the level of people is universal. And whenever in scripture certain statements are made, which can seem judgmental, which can seem derogatory, we do always look at the context. The context itself is not not judgmental or derogatory. If you consider the words which the Prabhupada quotes over here, Mani Parat Vyapakshitya Yevishyu Papa Yonaya Triyo Vaishyas Tatha Shudra Stepiyanti Parangatim. So this is 932 in the Bhagavad Gita, where she is saying that if those who take shelter of me, even if they be low born, we should worry. <coughs> The women, Vaishya, Shudras, even they can attain the supreme destination. So, what is being said over here? How can the idea today that somebody is a Lobo or Papa Yunaya, that itself is that itself is considered controversial? Most people have the idea today there's a lot of emphasis on social engineering. Although communism as a form of government has been a disastrous failure wherever it has been tried. Since communism as a as an ideology has has incredibly wide influence in the world. 
and the idea of communism is that people are always good systems are always bad and if we just break down the existing systems then people's goodness will come so in communism the idea was that the capitalists are holding all the money and that's why all the laborers are suffering now that has happened but that's not always the case there are there are iq levels which are different there are social skills that are different and some people might just be better than others if you want to cook food and if we say let's have democracy that everybody have equal cooking rights well the food is not going to be equally good there are levels of competence it's best that those who are the best at cooking they take charge and they guide others so if there is a system for cooking then it's not necessarily the system is bad it could be the system is bad but not always but communism's idea is that any kind of system which has hierarchy that is bad and in today's world that whole system has become very prominent that, that idea that any hierarchy is bad so marx had the idea that uh, not only is uh, the capitalism a system by which the capitalists exploit the workers is a, a religion is a system by which the the clergy exploit the lady the family is a system by which the man exploits the woman and the parents exploit the children so all structures were against that and when people come from this this with this understanding and then they read something you know it's less intelligent how dare so and no born what do you mean no born uh the idea is people are in it people are good the systems are bad hierarchies are bad now yes we understand that people at their core at the level of soul they are good everybody is a part of god but everybody's soul is also covered by a mind and that mind based on their previous lives may be in goodness passion or ignorance sattva ra is of tamas and based on how where it is situated is sattva ra is of tamas accordingly people in their manifest behavior may have goodness or not have goodness Just like if parents have children, even two children, if they are twins, they are not entirely identical. Now some children are little silent. Some children, when they cry, see they are going to break the whole house down. Hmm? Some children, even they, when they are in the crib, they are looking out. When can I take over the house? <laughs> <laughs> so people, uh, they, we, when we talk about birth, there are certain characteristics which we all acquire from birth, and so when it is said that some people are low born it is not so much that you you are a bad person it is just, just that they have come from particular past and they have a particular kind of mind acknowledging that is not demonizing it is not judging if you are to function in the world then if certain certain things certain require certain level of competence their competence is not there then it has to be acknowledged so when it is said here alpha beta saha at one level the bhagavatam later on will use alpha beta saha for describing everyone in kali yuga which is the famous verse which talks about this word same phrase alpha beta saha about chaitanya mahaprabhu mm-hmm. what is that verse namo mahavadanyaya krishna prema padaya no sangho mangalas parshu nam ट इन टू the hierarchy 
of spiritual elevation, of spiritual progress. And we have to be very careful how we present such things. So, the mood of the scripture is that you can summarize it in one sentence from your place, at your pace. I was going to talk about grace, I got grace now. <laughs> <laughs> so, the mood of scripture is going to summarize in one sentence from your place, at your pace. Access his grace. So from your place, wherever you are, your grace is accessible, God's grace is accessible. And at your place, let's say for example, different people, they practice spirituality at different. So some people may be very serious, they may pronounce the word, some people may be in the household way. In the household way, also different people practice at different pace. So scripture includes everyone in its form. Mama Vartama Nuvartande Manusha Partha. All people are on my path, Jesus. That means the, the whole Vedic or um, Dharmic way is such that whatever level people are at, there is a place for them. Okay. If you can't practice pure devotional service, okay, you practice mixed devotional service. If you can't practice mixed devotional service, then at least practice some level of selflessness. We see this Krishna offering a hierarchy in the 12th chapter where 12.8 to 12.12 is .12, giving lower and lower levels at which you can connect with one after another after another. The mood is that if somebody is at that level, they can't come up. Then, okay, you can come up from here. Take this step forward. It's just like, see, we can consider scripture as similar to a temple. Uh, some, place, some traditional temples were high up on mountains, even now they are. We go to Tirupati. And some people, they say going to a temple means you have to actually climb up all the way to them. You cannot go by a bus anyway. That is, it's a non-tradition. Climb up. You want to see the Lord, you purify yourself. So yes, that, that's good if somebody has that level of dedication. But if somebody can't do that, then what to do? Then there has to be more accessible ways. There were lifts. People can be lifted and carried. People can go by buses. Mm. And uh, now Prabhupada's mood was that we should make, Prabhupada once asked, where should our temples be, where, where should, uh, where, some outside asked Prabhupada, where should your temples be located? So Prabhupada replied, where should a hospital be located? He said, where? These people are the sickest, are the most sick. So similarly, temples, Prabhupada said, should be located where people are most, where people need the spiritual message the most. That means Prabhupada stretched accessibility. That the temple should be as easily accessible as possible. And that's why big, big cities, and they can have multiple temples also. Because, because what happens is people uh, find, it, find it difficult to travel. It's not that it's difficult to travel, but to travel for a spiritual purpose is very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> travel to watch a movie or travel to eat some delicacy or travel to play some sports match or something like that. I was in London at that time. One of my friends had come from India uh, to London. Uh, a cricket World Cup final was supposed to be there. In, no, for the World Cup only. Uh, there's India Pakistan match was supposed to be there. And <laughs> at that time, there was a fear that there would be rain. So he had purchased a ticket, one ticket for 1,000 pounds. <coughs> 1,000 pounds is how much? It's more than a lakh actually. It's more than a lakh. And they had that if you if one ball is not, if you, not a single ball is worth, then the ICC would refund the money. But he had bought the ticket in black. So he would not get the refund also. So he called me and he said, oh, I don't believe in God, but can you pray that God <laughs> 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 so, so the point is that for worldly purposes, people can travel from one part of the world to another. But when it comes to spiritual purposes, oh, it's a one-hour drive. It's too much. We, we tend to be lazy. And this is just human psychology. We can't deny that. So Prabhupada stressed accessibility, make things as accessible as possible. 
Now we just said we want, we don't want to have our temples on hilltops, or even if we have in the village a, a temple as well, we have accessible steps. So just as our temple, we make the Lord accessible in the temples. Similarly, we need to make the Lord accessible through the books. So that means it's our responsibility to make the philosophy accessible. That is what Yasdev is doing. So when it is said that this is for less intelligent people, it is not a statement. So if for example, the temple is not on the hilltop because it is for less austere people. Well, if you say this for less austere people, okay, I'm less austere. I don't consider it as an insult. Yeah, I'm less austere. You say it's Ekadashi, it's... And for less austere people, we have Prasadamudhi. Well, is that, a, is that a character assessment? It doesn't have to be taken that personally. Yeah, okay, my, my, my body can't take fasting. This would have been So similarly, the statements, uh, such as less intelligent, they are not a character judgment about people first. It is indicated that, okay, from our, each of us has a past life history. And by the past life history, we have a certain kind of body and mind. And a particular kind of body and mind may or may not be suited for a particular kind of work. So, especially in philosophical analysis, it requires, it requires a very strong intellectual ability. And not everyone has that. Bhanu Maharaj was, uh, Bhanu Maharaj translated Govinda Bhashya uh, by the, the Vedanta commentary of Baldev Devotion and I edited that book and even previously while doing my engineering studies I have not read a book that was tougher than that book. It was incredible. Every page I had to read several times. Why? Because it, the Vedanta Sutra is basically what? It is this is a discussion about the essential conclusion of the Upanishads. So if somebody doesn't know the Upanishads, they can't even know what is being discussed over there. It's like, it's like a discussion for somebody who already knows the Upanishads and then they mention some verse and it's not in the full verse. It's just like one part of the verse and everybody knows. And it's assumed that everybody knows and then what does this verse mean? It's like to give a contemporary example, hey, some people are total cricket lovers, they are cricket manics. And they discuss, you know, oh, this catch he took was like that catch in that match. Now you just mention that, and for the other people who are also cricket lovers, immediately a movie starts, oh, that catch was taken like this. Now somebody who doesn't know anything about cricket, say, what are you talking about? And they are so animated and so excited. <laughs> And other people just can't understand anything. So whenever I when I first came about five, six years ago to America, I was doing Western college programs. So some of the Western outreach audience told me, says don't use any cricket examples. But for Western people, cricket reminds them of an insect, not a game. <laughs> <laughs> so so the Vidan the Vidan Sutra is a very difficult book to understand. Because it presumes a certain level of knowledge. Just like a talk between cricket lovers, it presumes that if two people are discussing, oh, that catch was so much, this catch was like that. And if somebody doesn't know at all, oh, what was that catch? Don't bore us. Don't bore us. You know, we'll talk later about it. But they want to relish at that time, and somebody who's a novice just comes in the way of relishing. The same way, the Upanishads, especially the Upanishadic part of the Vedas and the Vedanta Sutra, these are extremely complex and they all presume a very high level of knowledge. And when that level of knowledge is not there, they become inaccessible. So, when it is written, we described over here how the Puranas and the Itihasas are written, it is, it is to show how it is made more accessible. And the point of it is, is not condemnation, but compassion. And not condemnation of you are less intelligent. But compassion, and okay, even you, this can be made accessible. And that is the mood even of the words I quoted 932. When uh, Krishna says, So he says, even certain people are Papa Yodaya, even they can attain the supreme destination if they become devoted to me. 
So the point is not that these people are less intelligent. The point is that even they can attain the supreme destination. So if uh, so, if you say have a book like um, I'd say laptops or dummies, even somebody who has never touched an electronic gadget can understand how to operate a laptop. Can become can master the basics of laptop. But this is not a judgment about oh you have never touched them, what kind of technological illiterate you are. That's not the point. So when we convey such things, the statement like less intelligent are there in scripture. But scripture was spoken in a particular context and they had a particular meaning at that time. And today the meaning is different. And unless we understand the context uh, and we we understand that context, we understand what it mean over there, meant over there. And we understand today's context and then convey that intent today. If unless we do that, the same statements which were rage were meant to increase accessibility. They will increase inaccessibility. That means the same thing, oh, this is this is this is meant to make the Vedic scripture like less accessible and less intelligent. You call me less intelligent? How dare you get lost? So the same statement which is meant to increase accessibility can increase inaccessibility if we don't sensitize people to the context. So it is our responsibility that we be aware of the context and present Shastra accordingly. Our purpose is of course that we want to elevate everyone to the level of Krishna. But even if a person is not ready to rise to the level of Krishna, we should be able to accept them and value them where they are. There are many, if we consider Shri Prabhupada, uh, here in America when he preached, uh, the preaching basically meant moving to the temple. People, there were people who were in the counterculture and they all just moved into the temple. Prabhupada says in one lecture that the hippies, had already done Sarva Dhamman Pritich. <laughs> they had given up their dharma to their family, to their education, to their career, even their dharma to their hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> and Prabhupada said they had already done Sarva Dhamman Pritich. I taught them how to do Maa Mekam Sharnam <laughs> How to come to Krishna. How to surrender to Krishna. And, uh, at that time, anybody, even somebody who was practicing serious bhakti, if they were not living full time in the temple, they were called as fringes. And it was a derogatory term. Oh, you are on the fringe. You are not moving in the temple. You are so weak, you are so uncommitted, so you are fringes. Now, practically today, our whole movement is fringes. <laughs> but, you know, devotees, they are staying in their home, they are very committed. It's incredible level of commitments are there. So, now that term, if we start using today, well, we will just alienate everyone by that. If especially if you use that term in that, that connotation, that negative derogatory connotation. But Prabhupada was not like a, Prabhupada was really multifaceted in the resource. Prabhupada was not one track. For many people, preaching idea is, their idea of preaching is, there is one program and download that program on everyone. As, down, as soon as you see a, per, a person, okay, program download start. So it's Prabhupada not like that. And Prabhupada was in India. At that time, most people who helped him, very few actually became committed followers. We consider the dedicated disciples of Shri Prabhupada or the leaders of our movement. How many of them are from India who were introduced in India? Maybe Lokanath Maharaj, maybe Gauravind Maharaj was there, Radha Gauravind Maharaj. But everyone, Bhakti Charuchana, Bhakti Charuchana, just very, very few are those who were introduced in India. And if you consider the number of Prabhupada disciples in India, Prabhupada disciple is, a, is like a rare species in India. Not using the word species in a negative sense. But in, in the Western world, if you go to places like Alachua, there are so many Prabhupada disciples. The point is, Prabhupada spent from 1970 onwards major part of his year in India. And yet Prabhupada did not have many disciples from India in India. But Prabhupada made a phenomenal number of life members. And they were not ready to commit themselves to become dedicated. They were full time. Many of them didn't even become 
initiated or chance exchange problems of all four ranks. But Prabhupada accepted them, Prabhupada valued them, Prabhupada respected them. One of the most prominent helpers for the Juhu temple. He was a disciple of one of the most prominent Mayavadi gurus. And if you go to his home, it's like a big picture of the gurus. The Prabhupada went to his house many times. Prabhupada did not comment about that. The Prabhupada, uh, he, now when he was talking, Giraj Maharaj was telling me about him. And he was in the last days, this life member, Giraj Maharaj went to meet him and he said, he was in tears talking about Prabhupada and remembering Prabhupada, what a what saintly person he was. So, you know, Prabhupada and Krishna have the potency to take someone back to God just because they love Prabhupada so much, they served, uh, they did so much for, for our movement. In, when, when Prabhupada was in America in 1968, his visa ran out. All of us can empathize with this problem, especially if you are an H1B or if you are visiting, like I am. So his visa ran out and the devotees just couldn't renew it. They tried and tried and tried. And the, then finally, there was one very influential person who was, you know, is, is Allen Ginsberg. Now, Allen Ginsberg was like an LSD guru. Now he would take LSD and he would take encourage everyone to take LSD. And not only was he a proponent of LSD, he was also, in fact, he re-Christian LSD. LSD is a chemical name for a drug. He said LSD is actually a league of spiritual discovery. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who takes LSD joins this league. And so he was an active proponent of that. And not only was an active proponent, he was also mm, mm, he's also gay. And when he would come to meet Prabhupada, he would come with his, uh, his partner, it was me. And Prabhupada never criticized him for it. And he respected Prabhupada so much. He helped Prabhupada so much, in so many different ways. In fact, one of the biggest programs that Prabhupada had at Ohio State University, where several thousand students were there. And Prabhupada said, we have Kirtan. And Prabhupada said to him, you give a talk. He said, no, Swami, how can I give a talk? He said, this is your idea. He said, no. You speak based on your experience of Hare Krishna. He said, no, no, Swami, I can't speak. And they talked and then, so finally, both of them spoke. He spoke for a few minutes, Prabhupada spoke for a few minutes, they had long hearings. So Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, no, oh, Swami, how can I speak? He said, no. Uh, he said, you are blessed by Krishna. Now, he goes into, you could say he was breaking so many legs. And he said, I have recently, I, I have given up beef, but I still eat meat. And Prabhupada, that seems Krishna's blessings working. Something like that, Prabhupada said. So Prabhupada did not condemn him for that. So the point I'm making is that uh, Prabhupada accepted the value of him. And then devotees went to him and said, you cannot even get Prabhupada's visa. And then he got his lawyers working. And within a few days, Prabhupada got a visa. And after that, he never had a problem with the visa. So actually, we can even say that the Krishna is gone exists because of Galen Ginsburg. Because if Prabhupada had not been able to come to a barrier, how would he have established his gone? And Prabhupada respected him. So the point is, Prabhupada accepted and valued people wherever they were. And this is not compromising or being wishy washy. It is accepting people where they are. Of course, we encourage them to rise higher, but if they can't, if they don't rise higher, we reach down to them. It's like, there are, I can put one last point, and then uh, I can have some questions. See, we open the doors for some people to come, to, for people to come to Krishna. And some people never walk through the door. Unfortunately, what we do is, when they don't walk through the door, we just bang the door in their face. You ask a demonic person, you are going to go to hell, you don't give this up. And they say, you go to hell first. I don't want, hell, I don't want to have anything to do with you. But we need to know that different people work in different ways. If we may open the doors for some people, and some people may open the doors for us. Some, they may, we may open the door for them, but they may never walk in through the door. But they may have certain contacts, certain influence in society, and they may open certain doors for us. 
So there were many of the influential life members in, in India or in Ginsburg in America. They opened doors for Prabhupada that he could reach out to more and more people. So they will they also need to be accepted. So that mood of acceptance of everyone where they are at, that is very important if we want to represent our tradition properly. And that is what Yasdev has done over here. When he made scripture accessible, that is what Shri Prabhupada did through his books, through his temples, and through his personal conduct. And that, as the followers of Yasdev and Shri Prabhupada, that is also our responsibility to make scriptural wisdom as accessible as possible. So I'll summarize what I spoke. I spoke today on the topic of how to make scripture accessible. The scripture for dummies. That was the uh, theme of the talk. So the word dummies, when we say scripture for dummies, the word uh, say laptops for dummies, it's for dummies is not a derogatory statement about the level of people. It is a laudatory statement about the accessibility of the knowledge. And <clears throat> So, words have connotations and denotations, what they mean and what they signify beyond the dictionary meaning. So, today the word less intelligent, if we are allowed to make this it can seem very derogatory. How dare you call me less intelligent? And this comes because many people, the communist ideology that people are good, hierarchies are bad, that is very widespread. And anybody puts a hierarchy, oh, you are less intelligent, that means you are more intelligent, and you are thinking I am more intelligent, and you are putting me down the hierarchy. People reach, rebel against that. So, because people are very cultural, very sensitive about these things, we also have to be sensitive. So when scripture says, for example, some people are low-born, the point is not to condemn them. The point is to recognize that we all have a mind which we have brought from the past. The soul, at the level of the soul, everybody is equal, everybody is pure, everybody is good. But everybody's mind is different. And based on the kind of mind and body we have, we are maybe suited or not suited for certain functions. So, hierarchies of dominance, hierarchies of exploitation are bad, but hierarchies of competence are not only good, they are essential. They are cooking the, the best food should be the head. So, when scripture says this is, okay, this is for more intelligent, this is for less intelligent people, then that is, that is not meant to condemn some people. Like Vedanta Sutra is meant for people who are very intelligent. That means, uh, in, it, they are already deeply steeped in all the Upanishads. And it's like a discussion between cricket lovers about various cricket, various cricket events. So people who don't have that, family, that depth of familiarity just can't understand anything. So how do we make it accessible? That's what the mood of Vyasadev here is to make scripture accessible. And less intelligent is not a judgment about the level of people. It is a statement about the level of the presentation. And Dr. Omar Prabhupada made the temples accessible, not on hilltops and remote places, but in the heart of the cities. So, just as Prabhupada made the temples physically accessible, we also need to make Prabhupada's books intellectually and emotionally accessible for people. And that means, if certain words had some, like, had certain objective connotation in the past, but have negative connotation today, then we have to navigate that very carefully so that people so the thing which was meant to increase accessibility in the past might, be, might increase in accessibility today if we are not sensitive. Then I talk about how Prabhupada uh, accepted people where they were. As the life members in India, uh, they would have been considered worse than fringes because they are not in practicing bhakti. But uh, Prabhupada accepted them and valued them. They loved Prabhupada and Prabhupada, Prabhupada valued them. Prabhupada loved them. And I talk about how Alan Ginsburg Although there are many objectionable things, if we just have, if our idea of preaching is just download one program in every month, then we could have, Prabhupada could have objected to so many things about him. Prabhupada valued him said, you are blessed by Krishna. Why? Because he was inclined toward Krishna. And some people may never walk through the doors we open for them, but it will be open doors for us. To take Krishna to places where we would never ourselves be able to reach Krishna. Take Krishna to. So, Accepting people where they are at and making Krishna consciousness accessible to them where they are is the mood of Vyasadeva, Shri Prabhupada, and we can pray that that become our mood also. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Any questions or comments?
Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. I didn't even know that, but I was here in the lecture. And I had this question for a long time. I was hoping you can answer it. You know, I was hoping to ask this when you come here. Uh, I work in the HR field of, of organizations. Which field? HR. HR, HR yes. yes. So now most of the modern companies, they have something called core values when they establish companies. Mm -hmm. And when they follow the core values, it gives a culture to the whole organization and that pertains to culture. Um, I know as Krishna Conscious devotee, we have so many values that we have to build within ourselves. I was thinking if maybe Acharya's day or Prabhupada day, is there a certain set of core values for us as Islam or Vaishnavas that we can filter down to it as security? Okay, it's a big question. Uh, it's like every organization has core values. Uh, will as a movement have some core values. Mm -hmm. We could talk about, see, every organization has two things. It's a technique and, and, and the language of philosophy of religion, it is called as doxy and praxy. Like you have orthodoxy, doxy is doctrine, philosophy, and praxy is practice. So, what is our, what are, what is our philosophy? In that, what is the core? And what are, what are practices? In that, what is the core? So, what are the purpose? So, if you consider the philosophy, now Prabhupada wrote many books, Prabhupada never gave, like, these five points are our philosophy. Mm -hmm. When Prabhupada was asked directly, if somebody wants to study your work in summary, Professor Hopkins asked him, Prabhupada said, uh, quoted 1, 2, 9, and 10, that purpose. It is, Dharma Syabhavarga Sinathortha Yagalvati. The Dharma is meant for transcendence. Human life is meant for spirituality. So, we could say, in our tradition, Bhakti Nath Thakur is given to Dashimon Tattu. And Dashimon Tattu is actually very, very simple principles. That Hari is the Supreme, that we are all parts of Hari. Some parts are under illusion. Bhakti is the best way to come out of illusion. Vedas are, come from Hari. They are core principles. So I gave a series of talks on Dashimon Tattu. And they are on my website. So we could say, now so many devotees, there is a whole discussion right now going on at the GBC level also. I am a part of the Shastri Advisory Council, which um, works with the GBC. So we are discussing about this. So many devotees are recommending the Dashimun Tattva as our core philosophical values. Hmm? It's not yet officially formalized by the GBC. It may take some time. But okay. that, that is one possible statement. Hmm? Now as far as our, our practices or purposes are concerned, we can look at the seven purposes of this form. Mm -hmm. So, Prabhupada says that we want to correct the imbalance of values in society. We want to have a place for the dedicated to Prabhupada doesn't say we want to erect a temple. He says we want to erect a place for dedicated to the transcendental pastime of Krishna. We want to make people closer to each other and to Krishna. Huh? We want to publish books for these purposes. Like the seven purposes are there. I have similar classes on that also. But I would say these could be the core values. Now, in this, interestingly, in the seventh purpose of this con, Prabhupada doesn't talk so much about you have to refute this philosophy and that. So, the step is the teachings, and part of the teachings is also countering uh, certain misconceptions. But, you know, we can counter misconceptions only after we have earned the trust of people. So, many times what we do is, even before we have won the trust, we start challenging their conceptions. And they just, uh, if their faith in what they are practicing is more than their faith in us, then they will simply reject us as being fanatical. So I think uh, those could be the core values. And if, again, if you want to take it further back in our tradition, Thronana peace, Vijayan Tharora peace, Vishnana, humility, tolerance, and respectfulness. Those are something which could be also considered. It's difficult. Krishna Askaraj Goswami says that this is the this is the words that we should make like a neck bead and deer around our neck. Pranada is Vichin. So we could consider that also to be like a core value. But it's an important discussion. And to some extent, uh, we all in our practices also, we, we evolve towards certain core values. So see, we, some of us may come from a broadly speaking karma background. Karma means, not in a negative sense, but like rework and rituals. 
కర్మ వ్యాక్సిన్ ఇట్స్ కర్మ కాండ్ సమ్ ఆఫ్ బికమ్ ఫ్రమ్ అన్ బ్యాక్గ్రౌండ్ నాకే జనరలైజ్ ఆల్వేస్ ప్రాబ్లమ్ అంటే బట్ విన్ ఇండియన్స్ కమ్ టు భక్తి కృష్ణ భక్తి ఇన్ కృష్ణ కాన్షియస్ మూమెంట్ మోస్ట్ మోస్ట్ ఇండియన్స్ కమ్ టు కర్మ బ్యాక్గ్రౌండ్ వెన్ వెస్టర్న్ పీపుల్ కమ్ టు భక్తి ఇఫ్ దే హ్యాడ్ కర్మ బ్యాక్గ్రౌండ్ దేవ్ గుడ్ క్రిస్టియన్ ఇఫ్ దే కమ్ టు ఇట్స్ ప్రైమ్ ఫ్రమ్ జ్ఞాన బ్యాక్గ్రౌండ్ జ్ఞాన బ్యాక్గ్రౌండ్ మీన్స్ దే హ్యావ్ డీప్ ఫిలాసఫికల్ క్వశ్చన్స్ ఇట్స్ నాట్ ఇండియన్స్ డోంట్ హ్యావ్ ఫిలాసఫికల్ క్వశ్చన్స్ దే ఆల్సో హ్యావ్ ద పాయింట్ ఇస్ బ్రాడ్ ఐ డోంట్ హ్యావ్ బ్రాడ్ కేటగిరీస్ సో so for in many things the rituals become very important this is what we do in our family and for many people westerners the rituals are more important it's the philosophy is important and that's why we can have some uh, east west struggles or tussles in our movement also so it's because we came from a particular background that's why we naturally consider this important now that is important but is that the most important thing that's why if we leave it to individuals we all at a functional level form some core values i was recently at like one place and i fall and down i you know i'm lost and weird so what happened so i thought maybe there's some terrible thing that happened so i couldn't fast nigel on ikadesh no i couldn't fast nigel on janmashtami so that is disaster for you <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh, this devotee was fantasizing so many things you know after that i uh, you know i had this problem my boss became upset with me my car broke down my computer is not working is krishna angry with me because i didn't pass <laughs> <laughs> so for him that became the core value for him thinking i'm ruined if i don't follow this <laughs> so it doesn't have to be like that so the core values will be though the basic principle we can say is okay when we are going further is anukulya uh, sankalpa atikulya sabarchana whatever takes us closer to krishna we accept that whatever takes us away from krishna we keep a distance from so smarta vidya from krishna so smarta vidya from jarchi always remember krishna never forget krishna that is our ultimate core principle thank you thank you yes ma'am Uh, uh, talk about uh, the acceptance. Uh, the Prabhupada's main uh, the relationship building, especially with uh, any, whether the vote is not the vote, it was an acceptance. But he had that compassionate nature uh, from his heart. But uh, now, uh, hearing this, yes, we can develop, but that's very difficult. When I go, I suppose if I go for a public school, of course I'm not a public school, but I'm just thinking. if i go and talk to people and get that relationship develop the relationship accept that sometimes you know hey you know this this guy is not anything you know that always in my heart so how do i you know uh, digest myself basically give that acceptance and then the compassion i don't have it at all so okay so if we don't have that acceptance of people where where they are what do we do in broadly there are two kinds of people liberal and conservative now eh uh, now actually speaking this terminology doesn't really apply to is con so much because even the most liberal con devotees are more conservative than the most conservative christians or other religions now who is following for your principles who is chinese christian wrongs so we could say that our liberal is also very conservative hmm? but to some extent broadly speaking so people who are conservative they are more concerned about structures about hierarchies about processes people who are more liberal are concerned more about people now both are important i gave a class last sunday on north carolina and this topic i suppose somebody is a doctor now somebody is a brain surgeon now they have to very carefully follow the process if they want to treat the patient okay cut the brain from this part and then do they do they is very careful they are following so the processes are not the processes the standards the protocols are not unimportant but suppose that particular patient has some other complication then the standard protocol just cannot work so so you cannot just say i follow the process and the patient has certain uh, certain typical certain uh, particular uh, background particular problems that's not my problem 
then what we will have is operation successful, patient dead. So that what happens sometimes. Our operation teaching successful, speak, uh, student, yet got one and one Goes away never to come back. <laughs> Not to Krishna, but away from Krishna. So processes are important, but people are also important. So what integrates process and people, importance of people, process and important people is purpose. The purpose is not just to please the people, the purpose is not just to follow the process. The purpose is to get people to come closer to Krishna, hmm? to bring proximity to Krishna. The purpose, that purpose is what unifies. So if we have that focus on purpose, then we, we will be able to, yes, naturally we may gravitate towards, some people will gravitate towards process, some people will gravitate toward people. That's more important. That's more important. And to some extent, it may be that that's the way we are hardwired. All of us have a particular kind of body and mind. And then it, it may well be that it's not so easy for people who are conservative to become liberal or for liberal to become conservative. But what can happen is we can see that we both have a common purpose and we can be united based on purpose. And then I may be conservative. And I may preach and practice in a conservative way. That's fine. But as long as I don't say that my way is the only way. Hmm? That, and the liberals don't say, oh, these conservative people are our problem. Our problem. They are so intolerant, they are so judgmental. Okay, this is the way I practice Krishna consciousness. This is what inspires me. This is what has worked for me. And that's why I'm practicing this way. If somebody else wants to practice in some other way, that's, that's up to them. So, if we see the commonality of the purpose, and we don't, we don't demean people who are practicing the different way, then that's good enough. And one last thing I would say is that, if especially if we hear from people, hear, hear from people, hear, then we can understand where they are coming from. So. When I came, in, came from India, I came from India and India in our classes, we have often there a lot of a lot of uh, sarcastic jokes about how attached people are to their dogs. When I came to America, for me it is quite a shock that many devotees also had dogs as pets. And then as I'm spending time now, you may say somebody will call Prabhupada. Prabhupada, I may say Prabhupada said that also expression, but if you don't love God, you will love dog. Something like that. Now Actually speaking, in today's world, for people, for most people, there are many psychological studies. I actually present, I do a lot of presentation of philosophy with psychology. So many psychological studies say that for people who are depressed, who are lonely, who are addicted, having a pet is is a big step forward. Now I'm not recommending pets in any way. The point I'm making over here is that we may say that, oh, people are loving dogs instead of God. But in people's menu in life, God is not even an option. So for them, a dog is competing with drugs. A dog is competing with maybe mm, indiscriminate net surfing, maybe constant video gameplay, social media obsession. Now compared to all these, a dog is a big step up for And so if we hear from people, we understand where they are coming from. Yesterday I was at a uh, Midwest Chief in Yoga Festival in Wisconsin and I was talking uh, about how to spirituality can help us to deal with difficulties. So what are the difficult situations you have recently gone, you have gone through? And I gave some guidelines about how you could deal with them. So one of the one of the women she spoke over there, was an elderly woman, she said that, oh I had a dog for 21 years. And he was very sick and I had to put him down. Put him down basically means give sedative so that he dies. Because he was in great pain. So she said, this was such a, such a traumatic incident for me. And as she was speaking this, she started crying. Now, now if somebody is coming from that background and you say attachment dogs is terrible, then you know, it doesn't work. So, if we understand people, where they are coming from, then that itself generates some empathy. So I think those three things, uh, not 
see the common purpose. Acknowledging that there are different processes to that purpose, different paths to that purpose. And understanding where people are coming from. That can increase that acceptance and empathy. Just a follow-up. Yeah. Matthew, how long should I, when should I stop? Can you let me know? So, so our movement, I feel, you know, it's my understanding. Our movement, especially Nitya Prabhu's mercy, is liberal. Yes. So and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is conservative. conservative. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a liberal conservative dance together on our altars. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when, uh, what I mean to say is like, uh, when we introduce, let me liberal, and then we conservative. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> so, when we introduce, we are liberal, then we become conservative. Yeah, that's true. It's, that's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent it down through various places where people would not go. Yes. So, actually, I was talking with Ambarish Shro recently, just yesterday. He was there to meet Radhanath Mahaja, also happened to be there. So, Prabhupada asked Ambarish, why are you preaching to people in your social circle? Uh, so he said, yes. But when I tell them about the four regular principles, they don't like it. And Prabhupada said, don't tell them that. Don't tell them that. See, the idea is what? That, uh, so say suppose a new iPhone comes up. What is that? iPhone 11. 11. Okay. 11 sorry? 11 Pro. 11 Pro. Okay. Now, <laughs> so if iPhone 11 Pro comes up, now imagine, is it any promotion, any ad, will it start with the price? This is price. This is the price. No, first it will all start with the features. This feature, this feature, this feature, this feature. And then you click on the click, click, and then you find the price. Like, oh my God, I want to buy it. So first tell the features, then tell the price. If our purpose is to sell the phone, if somebody's purpose is to sell the phone, then you tell the features of the product before you tell the price of the product. If somebody wants to brag, hey, you know, I bought this phone, this is $1,200, $1,500, whatever, then their purpose is not to inspire others to buy the phone, their, others, their purpose is to incite others' envy. Oh, just see how wealthy I am. Look up at me and understand what a great person I am. So sometimes, when our we present also, it's no, it's more to impress us. See how strict I am, what I am for. See, no outreach, no promotion, do you tell the price of a product before you tell the features of the product. So similarly, for others, we need to first talk about the, the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Explain the world view, explain how it brings meaning and purpose to our life. Explain how it brings how it brings a sublime joy into our lives, and then talk about the price. So yes, what do you think is? It's be liberal initially, and be conservative later. It's true because it's yet hamamprakatendi. The more you want, the more you pay. But initially, and that's how, and this is not man, manipulation. This is the education. This is the way education works. If a student who is struggling to learn basic arithmetic is shown big books of triple integral calculus, I can never study this. And then the student will not even study what they could have studied. So we present according to people's level. It's so important. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I can talk one to one personally. So thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. 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 Jai.